Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I'm going to start things off with a warning. There is a very bright screen ahead, immediately ahead, as in three, two, one, now. What you see in front of you, this is Scratch. It is one of the most popular visual programming languages out there. It is very much aimed at a younger audience for getting started in programming. Unfortunately, there is no dark mode in Scratch unless you use some kind of a browser hack, so that's why it is very bright and very white. What you see in front of you, this is the visual programming blocks or bricks that go together to make up your game's logic. You see here, basically, these all drag together. So here on click, set a timer, and then this is a forever loop and then basically change timer over time. It's pretty simple, straightforward stuff uh, on receiving of events. So when a transition happens or when you die and so on, and then you've got things for sprites and so on down here. Again, if you are looking to get someone started in programming, you know, even though it's not technically coding or scripting, it still is. It's the same logic and you learn from it. So it's a good way to get people started in the world of game development, uh, especially. So now we're gonna move on to item number two, and that is Raylib. Now, Raylib is an excellent C-based cross-platform framework for doing all kinds of things. Basically, it is focused on game development, so enjoy video game programming, but it can be used for more than that. It's actually very modular in nature, uh, available on a number of different platforms. Now, the worst thing is I just did a rundown of C and C++ game engines, and somehow my stupid butt forgot about Raylib. Uh, I just left it off the list. I did not forget about Raylib. I cover it all the time on this channel because I am a big fan, but it did not make the cut there. As you see, Raylib runs on a number of different platforms, has a number of different language bindings, and it does a bunch of things that you need to do stuff. Uh, things like uh, graphics library, math, audio, GUI, PNG, resource management, and then a number of other technologies in there as well. And these all go together to enable you to create games, but also to create applications, as we are going to see from today's entry. And that is something called Scrap. Now, Scrap is an interesting new project. It is GPL3 licensed, by the way, so there's definitely some encumbrances of that license if you want to work on the code. Do be sure you know the details of GPL. It's one of the more um, encumbered licenses that are available open source wise. Uh, and you'll see here, very new. Uh, if you do like the project here though, do give it a star. They just did a release a couple of days ago of the Scratch, of the, sorry, Scrap language. Obviously this is very inspired by Scratch, but it is not Scratch. And right now this can't be used really to create games. It's basically um, more or less a terminal only language right now, but the whole idea behind this is to be a more advanced Scratch. So uh, you see down here, it's a new block based programming language with the aim to towards advanced users, written in pure C, mostly inspired by other block-based languages such as Scratch and its forks such as Turbo Warp. So why the hell am I talking about Raylib? Well, as you will see from down here, if I get all the way to the bottom, somewhere, dependencies. This is built using Raylib. So uh, the GUI for it, all of the visual programming and all of that stuff uh, is using Raylib. And I hope in the end this actually gets turned into a more Scratch-like experience in terms of uh, supporting game development, the visual side of things. Right now that isn't there yet, but also do keep in mind, right now we are on release 0.31 beta. So this is one thing I want you to keep an eye on for the future, but if you're looking for a visual programming language to make games today, not going to be what you're looking for. But perhaps this could be embedded into another uh, engine or something, but then again, that GPL v3 license is going to come into effect there. Uh, so it is, in, in terms of differences from Scratch, it has a faster runtime, it has uh, separate else if else blocks, uh, which eliminates a lot of the nesting checks. Uh, variables can have a lifetime. So again, it gives you kind of a little bit more control over your code than you would currently see with something like Scratch. Uh, custom blocks can return values and can be used as an argument for other blocks. Various string manipulation blocks and bitwise operators. Uh, data type conversion functions, more strict checks uh, for these blocks. Uh, they are case sensitive and will check data for equality. Lists are now data type instead of different types of variable. This allows nesting lists inside of a list, which is not very convenient as of right now. Code runs in a separate thread, so this solves a number of the performance issues compared to Scratch, and a modularized interface. Most of the interface can be rearranged or moved to another tab. So details on controlling it are available right there, but let's just go ahead and check it out in action. Again, the goal uh, is to uh, aim towards the more advanced users. So this is ultimately going to potentially be a more powerful Scratch, but again, early on. Now, another thing I want to point out to you, and this is like a kudo uh, to Raylib and the C software in general. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the release here. This is 
under two megabytes in size. Yeah, that's pretty insane. As you'll also notice here, uh, it's available for uh, Linux, Windows. Uh, there was just an update. Details of that are available here. Uh, again, this is a new project, so it's one of those things to keep an eye on going forward. And let's go ahead and fire up Scrap now. So it ships as an executable. So you can see this is your typical Scrap uh, logic. You basically drag things in and out like so, uh, and then things can nest inside of other things. So for example, I could put this inside of, of that and then and so on. The one thing you're gonna find, you go ahead and load projects up. There are a number of different examples that ship with it. Let's do a simple one here that shows a ball running on screen. So when you click, it goes ahead and it runs this logic. And I actually do find as a programmer, this is more, um, intuitive to me than scratches because it doesn't have that layer of syntactic sugar on top of it. I think in terms of things like if and else and straight up loops, not forever. Like I, I like the idea of loop concept here. So you can see the simple code that controls a ball on the screen. Again, right now it is terminal only. Hopefully we do see a graphical side of things and becomes more scratch like and starts adding things like sprites and so on. But I do not know for sure that that is going to happen. You want to go ahead and run your code, code, code. Uh, go ahead, click there and boom, there you can see again, it is a nested terminal. Uh, so that is one of the limitations right now, but that ladies and gentlemen is scratch. So you can see over here, um, all of the different uh, variables and controls and so on. So if you want to print out hello world, boom, there is the hello world function. It goes inside, things are color coded. So your logic seems to be under the orange. Your assignment seem to be under green. Your variables seem to be under blue and so on. Uh, and then you can create your own chunks of code using uh, the define blocks and so on. So that ladies and gentlemen, that is scrap. Again, an open source project uh, very early on, but if you're looking for like a more advanced scratch implementation could be an interesting one to check out. And again, built on top of Raylib and under two megabytes in size, which is really impressive. So ladies and gentlemen, that is scrap. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.